What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got what I consider to be one of the more important reviews uh, from my channel, uh, one that I'm really, really excited about. Um, this is the Civivi Praxis. This knife was actually donated to my channel by my buddy Ken. Thank you so much, Ken. That was really nice of you. He literally just shot me an email and said, hey, I've got this. I don't use it. If you'd like it, um, I will donate it to the channel. That's awesome. So I've had a lot of time with this knife. A lot of you remember me unboxing it. Um, I've spent a lot of time with it and I have definitely gathered my thoughts and I'm excited uh, to share them with you. Before we get started, you guys know down in my description, there are many useful items like my Wii a bit selector, my magnetic driver, some EDC flashlights, tools, things like that. There's also uh, some of the uh, most popular EDC folding knives of all time, including the rat, things like that. Um, everything is nicely sorted out and there's definitely something down there for everybody. So no, no matter what your itch is, even if it's something like this beautiful lady here, I've got stuff down there. So feel free to check that out. Also want to remind everybody that I am currently sitting at 76 patrons, so only nine patrons to go before we do the free to enter giveaways uh, for these uh, beautiful knives here with the Giant Mouse Clyde uh, in LMAX and Micarta and the um, Mazarine Nimrod in carbon fiber and uh, M390. About $150 value here and about a $200 value here. So the moment we hit 85 patrons, I will be opening up a free to enter giveaway for everybody, not just patrons, literally everybody. So if you have been enjoying my content and you'd like to support my channel and help me reach my goal, you can go down into the description, find my Patreon link, which is right up at the top, uh, click on it, have a look around, and then if you'd like to help support me, you can join any tier. The support would absolutely mean the world to me. Anyways, let's get moving here. Where is my tape measure? That would be helpful. There it is right there. So the overall length of the Civivi Praxis, man, I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, tip to scales coming in at that sweet spot, eight and a quarter, maybe 8.3 inches overall. That's a nice uh, measurement. That's one that I very much enjoy. From tip to scale on the blade, you're looking at about, you could call it about almost 3.75 inches in places. Um, it's definitely more than three and a half. The actual cutting edge though is only about three and a quarter given that you do have that very generous forward choil there. For those of you who don't know, Civivi is uh, essentially Wii's budget line. Now we does, we knives do have, uh, you know, they make um, some more expensive knives. Do I have one out here? No, it's in a box. Um, they've got some more expensive knives, they've got some less expensive knives, and then Civivi is kind of their, like, you, you take Wii's fit and finish, right, and you use uh, some uh, materials that are still good, but not not like $200, $300 materials, and then you put put them together on a knife, and, and that's essentially what you get here, Civivi. Now, a lot of people, you guys are all aware of Civivi. In fact, I'm nowhere near the first person to review the Praxis, right? So I'm going to tell you guys right now, the Praxis is a good knife, and a lot of people have said that. Um, I'm late for reviewing it, um, but uh, Civivi has some incredible knives in their line. Like they have, they're kind of starting to gain traction as um, not only do they make good knives for a reasonable price, but they make some really, really good stuff. I've got them down there. Like you can actually search for Civivi knives down in my description if you just want to go look at their line. Anyways, what are we looking at here for action? Um, for action, I know we're going to do size comparisons here in a sec. Um, I just want to get this out of the way. The action is absolutely perfect. You know, four to five years ago, action like that, you could you could not get action like that unless you were spending 200, 250 bucks on a ZT. That is not the case anymore. Civivi is, they just, they have it down and it's almost like, yeah, we got it. You're going to get good action moving on. We've got all these other great, amazing parts of our knife. Take a look at this. The action... The, the, the perfect action is almost an afterthought at this point. It's just you're going to get that with a Civivi knife, and that's cool. I just wanted to point that out. Not quite drop shut, but it does run on bearings, and just with a little bit of uh, encouragement, you can get it to fall nice and smooth into the uh, handle there. It's mostly just tightness, not really friction or anything like that. How about some size comparisons here before I get chatting too long? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so the camera angle is kind of throwing us off here, but the uh, Rat is just a little bit uh, longer here. Um, it's, I can see it in my light. It's just kind of hard to see there, for, probably from where you guys are looking. 8.6 versus 8.3. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Again, because of the camera angle, it's actually making the Praxis look longer, but those two are the almost exactly the same length. How about up against the Benchmade Gruptillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, 
Ritter Ho coming in at eight inches overall. In many ways, these guys share a lot of similarities in terms of profile of the handle, profile of the blade, things like that. It's just that this has got uh, a flipper tab on it and the grind is a little bit different there. How about up against the Benchmade Bugout? Benchmade Bugout is coming in at 7.5 inches overall, so it's definitely bigger there. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. The Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches. So this blade is gonna be, not, it's not gonna be legal for um, people to carry, uh, for a lot of people to carry just because of the overall blade length. But for those of you who are able to carry knives of this size, you're gonna be very happy with it. I think it hits a nice sweet spot for a lot of people. It's definitely right there in my range. So we're looking at G10 and you're looking at milled steel liners that come all the way up to the lips. That's my preference. Those of you who have watched my quest for the perfect budget knife uh, series know that, um, that I use this knife. Uh, I've, I've used it uh, multiple times here towards the end of the series as an example of exactly what I like uh, and that's just perfect. The end result, given that this is a larger knife, is still fairly heavy, 4.44 ounces. Um, that's not something that I shy away from. You guys know I always say the same thing in every single episode. Weight, you know, I can, I can handle a little bit more weight as long as the carry profile is good. And I can tell you that on this knife, the carry profile is good. You do have a flipper tab. It is kind of a taller blade, but taking a look at it uh, compared to some other um, knives that don't have the best profile but are still popular nonetheless, the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3, you can see there that the overall amount of room that it's taking up in the pocket is still similar, in fact better I'd say than the PM2. And then the overall thickness here, it's definitely a thinner knife than both the PM2 and the um, Para 3. You can see there, um, that's the, uh, the difference in thickness we're looking at there. It's, it's about the it's close, isn't it? I thought the Para 3 was almost exactly the same as the PM2. Well, here's the problem. I have some aftermarket scales in the PM2, but they're they're similar to the, the, the standard scales. You can see there, though, once again, about the exact same thickness as the Para 3. Anyways, moving on here, what are we looking at for materials? We're looking at 9CR13 MOV steel, which is a steel that... The first time I heard of it, I was like, okay, so it's slightly better than 8CR13. There's all these CRs, and there's all, there's such drastic differences between a lot of them, right? You have 9CR18 MOV. You've got uh, 8CR13 MOV, 8CR14 MOV. You've got 7CR17 MOV. So, like, 8CR13 MOV is like the, it's like right where the CR steels start that are acceptable, apparently, by the knife community. And then 8CR14 is a little bit better. And this, I'm telling you what I understand about because I don't have a lot of experience with this steel. And as soon as I heard CR, I was like, okay, it's one of those Chinese CR steels and they just, they're, they're all like stainless and they're all okay, right? Apparently 9CR4, 9CR18 MOV, which is what this is made of. I hope I'm getting these numbers right. Um, I've heard an, I've heard this echoed enough that I will go ahead and echo it to you guys. Not only is this steel acceptable in this price range, it's actually becoming a preferable steel. Um, people are reporting it does have uh, pretty good edge retention, pretty good toughness. It's definitely a stainless steel. It sharpens up well, takes a great edge. Um, these are all qualities that you want in a, in a user's steel. And apparently it's quite a bit better than 8CR13 and 8CR14 MOV steel. Just echoing things that I've heard a lot. I get a lot of comments every day. Uh, and I, you know, once I get to a certain point, if, I hear, if I'm hearing enough comments that are different from what I think or what I originally thought, and then I go and check it out online, and it turns out there's a correspondence with what people are saying, then I will correct myself. And in this case, um, I just want to make that clear. Um, I've said 9CR13 or 9CR18 MOV in the past was uh, okay. It's apparently quite a bit better than that. So that's pretty cool. You do have a satin finished blade here. You can see this blade's been used just a little bit, a few scratches on there, but it really looks nice. Let me emphasize this. They do a great job of knocking down all these corners. You're only getting a little bit of fingernail there. It's very, very smooth. Not what I'd call sharp at all. See the flat runs out about 40% the length of the blade and the rest of it is just this connecting line with the swedge here. Lots of room to drop down to a, an absolute laser beam. Of, a, uh, of an edge there. Let's go ahead and give you guys a measurement uh, on the, uh, the spine thickness so you know what we're starting with. It's very thin. Um, yeah, I mean, not even 120 thousandths, 111 thousandths there. So th consider all the room you have to drop. I mean, the, the blade is very similar in height to the Spyderco Shaman. 
let you guys see that there. Spyderco Shaman's a little bit of a thicker blade and a little bit of a taller blade, but very similar. It's interesting how similar those two blades are. So the Shaman's 140,000, so imagine only 111,000, 110,000 dropping down to the edge here. It gets super thin, super thin behind the edge. Very performance oriented blade. Not the type of blade, despite it still being pretty tall down here, still not the type of blade you want to dig into something and pry around with, but considering how much material is at the end there, you still have some decent durability down here. Nice puncture tip. The blade just looks very handsome all the way around. Has that nice ramp that I always talk about that I like with the jimping so that when you're pushing down on it, you're really locked in. That coupled with the true second knuckle choil here, meaning I can actually get my finger wrapped around it without feeling like I'm gonna cut myself right there. It is close but I can definitely do it. This is a position I like to hold my knives in when I'm breaking down really heavy. Like if you, a refrigerator box or some bo some big thick cardboard box that comes with a new ho home appliance, when you have to break that sucker down, man, you really need to be locked into your blade. You really need to be pushing, you know, the blade into that material as close as you can to your finger so you get that heavy pressure cut. At least that's how I like to do it. So I really appreciate a blade that's ground like this and has that choil. Not just for stuff like that, but I mean, whether you're doing heavy cutting tasks or, or if you're doing, you know, delicate sort of carving tasks or anything like that, I mean, this blade is just ridiculous. It's so well done. I, man, it's awesome. And here's the coolest thing about it. It's completely sterile. There's no maker marks or anything on it. It's just the blade. So Vivi does a great job with that. They just leave all their stuff off of it. They've heard people say that, you know, in uh, reviews like this. Um, and they've heard, uh, you know, just uh, consumers say stuff like that, and they just, they're awesome. I, I love that. Um, very handsome blade, very functional blade. Um, just about darn near perfect on that blade. I have very, basically no complaints whatsoever. Um, this is a flipper. The flipper, all the edges have been nicely knocked down, so you don't have any obnoxious, obnoxious uh, sharpness there. Um, you can do a light switch. Um, you can also do a push button. The detent is set up to be about medium heavy. You can see here, nice click in there. No uh, decent lash, no movement whatsoever. Um, really, really happy with that. Absolutely um, no, no complaints whatsoever on the action. The action is just perfect. There's no double clutch, by the way. And a lot of people ask me, what do you mean when you say double clutch? The area where the detent ball is passing over the side of the blade, you know, if it's right there, like if it were right here uh, and I push down, um, then the, it not being past it puts it in this weird spot where it wants to click back over the detent ball, but you're well past it by the time it meets your thumb and then you can kick it back into place or you can move your finger out of the way and close it. You don't have to worry about it coming back over it. So no issues there. Moving down to the G10, we have wonderfully chamfered. This is how you do this. I talk about this all the time and I'm like, just do the edges like that. Spyderco did it on the Shaman, and this everybody talks about what an ergonomic masterpiece the Shaman is, and it's literally, it's almost the exact same thing. It's just kind of a budget version of that. You know, there's a there's more rounding here, but you can see, you know, like they start way back here and then they come down, and what that does is it gives the illusion of full contouring um, uh, while keeping the costs down on, on the process, um, but uh, it's, it creates for this unbelievable ergonomic experience. There's no sharp corners anywhere. It just feels good. You're able to keep the thinness of the scales down because you have this flat area right here and then you just start way back here and it comes down around. They've knocked every corner down. It's just, uh, this is how this should be done. The days of this should be over. The days of this um, are, are, are should be upon us completely. Savivi does that exactly right and I just am so happy with that. It's just fantastic. Ergonomics all the way around on this guy. This thing was made for your hand. Like, this thing is spider co good in terms of ergonomics. It's very, so a lot of people are like, well, your bias has the exact same lines as the uh, Hinder XM18, which, oh, my regular one's not down here. I'll use the, um, use the other one I've got down here. Um, you can see here the lines on the uh, XM and the Praxis are extremely, extremely similar. Same exact thing with knives like, uh, we'll, we'll again use the Shaman, right? It's the same type of lines. How about the Manix 2? Same type of lines. All knives that have been heavily applauded for their incredible ergonomics. Um, this knife has perfect ergonomics. Very happy with it. Very happy with the execution of the scales. Very happy with the execution of 
everything. All the way, like all the, the entire handle is just great. You have a, a handsome uh, Civivi uh, uh, pivot there on the front. Then you have the uh, T8 adjustment side on the back. Unfortunately, we do have T6 body screws and let's check that to be sure. Use my trusty Wii a bit selector and remind everybody at the same time that you can pick this guy up for yourself um, by just going down to my description and using my link. These are actually, no, that's really? This is, too, this can't be. Oh wait, it's because I'm wrong. It's a T7. Is it a T7? Yep. Even, I'm gonna check one up just to be sure. I was convinced that it was a, no, guys, okay, I'm stupid. That's a T8. I'm, I, I'm, I'm stupid. I was just, uh, I was just, I guess, thrown off by the size of the head. Um, bravo, Civivi, uh, you, you, do you use T8? Thank you. And they've actually got the setup exactly the way that I want it. Two body screws, a backspacer and two on this side, meaning there's just so minimal, there's such minimal hardware on the knife all the way around. It's, it'd be such an easy knife to break down. Fantastic. I, <laughs> I was proved wrong in the middle of a review. Okay, great. T8 body screws. Uh, that's awesome. Why is that important? Because the heads of your bits and the heads of the screws will be saved or much more durable versus a small T6. And then you don't have to worry about dealing with this Chinese company and trying to get, you know, more parts if, if something strips out. Uh, if you need to break this down and clean it out because it's a budget knife, you're probably gonna be using it, right? So that's awesome. Backspacer is great. You've got an unobtrusive lanyard hole. Um, you've got a nice look to the backspacer. No issues with that whatsoever. The pocket clip is okay. It's a deep carry clip. It does not have screws recess, so you're gonna fight it every now and then on your pants pocket, but overall it's very easy to get in and out of the pocket. I do not like the bill. The bill is shaped in a way that uh, if it catches something, which it might, it's gonna be fairly easy for it to catch on something and then break off, then you're gonna be stuck with a knife without a pocket clip. But it does have good retention. Um, it's not, there's no play in it or anything like that. It carries in the right place and it carries absolutely deep. No issues there. Other than that, the knife is exactly the same on the other side. You do have mounting positions for tip up left or right handed. Um, this knife probably did come centered, but it's been used a little bit. It doesn't rub. I have no issues with that. Even if it didn't come centered, it wouldn't bother me. There is no play anywhere up, down, left or right. It's absolutely solid. You can see that the lockup coming in at a completely reasonable 50%. In this uh, knife's configuration, we have OD green scales and a gold liner. You have, There's black with gold. There's I think they've got blue line. It's weird, but okay, it's fine. My ideal configuration would be black G10 and some silver line scales, but that's just an aesthetic preference. It's gonna be different for every single person. They've got a lot of different flavors here, right? So again, to recap, here's what I don't like about this knife. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say this. Shouldering on um, the part of the blade that actually wraps around the stop pin, which is great for wear over time. There's more uh, surface contact and it's better you know, for the relationship between the blade and the uh, lock bar over time, so that's great. So anyways, here's uh, to recap, here's what I don't like about the knife. Um, the screws on the pocket clip are not fully recessed, so you gotta fight it a little bit on your pants. The bill sticks up a little bit. It might catch something. That's it. That, uh, that's it. Uh, here's the best part, guys. This is roughly a $50 knife. Somewhere between 50 and 60 bucks. Can I recommend this knife? Yes, if you don't own this knife, you should. It's that good. I mean, I, I don't always say that, right? I don't know. I mean, a lot of times I'm like, yeah, it's a great knife. It might not be for everybody, but listen, the, I mean, like if you can't carry a blade length, uh, this, this blade length in your area, right? If it's illegal to carry it, then I completely understand. But if you can, yes, you should own this knife. It is so good. This is one of the best EDC, budget EDC knives that exists. It's awesome. I would love it to have thumb studs and external stop pins for those of you who have watched my series. It doesn't have it, that's fine. Most people prefer this configuration anyway. It runs on bearings, I didn't mention that, um, but the, the, the deconstruction of this knife would be easy. Um, the, uh, the blade steel is good. The, uh, the blade is ground in a way that's gonna emphasize performance and still be able to be used outside in hard use situations. Um, the contouring of the G10 is just, it's not really contouring, but the heavy chamfering is great. Uh, the scale setup's great. I mean, the lanyard position's great. The, everything about this knife is just great. I, I love this. I am so happy with this knife. It is so perfect. I, I cannot recommend this knife enough, guys. This is gonna go on my favorite knives of all time. It's gonna go on my, my recommended knives playlist and it's gonna go on my um, cheap knives that I like playlist.
Sorry, I had to cut the video for time there because I could not stop talking about how much I like this. But I mean, you know, it's like I said, this knife is going to be a little big for some people. You know, if you're not a big knife person, then it's not going to be for you. But for those of you who have the same sweet spot as me and you really need a knife that you can depend on, you know, it's going to be fairly reasonable for, you know, an, an indoor carry knife, but definitely a great working tool for just about every situation, you know, or any situation that you would reasonably uh, call up, that you would call upon a folding knife for, you know. Um, then yeah, I mean, this is just great. This is also a fantastic example for those of you who have friends who are like, they like knives, but I just, I want to start them off with the right thing. I want to give them a good example, but I don't want to give them something that's going to break the bank. You know, a lot of people, like there's a lot of great knives out there to be had between one and $200. You tell that to somebody who's new to the knife world and they're like one to $200 for a pocket knife. Are you serious? That's a common response, right? $50 is a lot easier to deal with. Um, this is about as good an example as you can give somebody for that amount of money. And you will definitely attract them to the, what I consider to be the better parts of the knife world, you know, or at least the enthusiast part of it. Uh, this is just an absolutely recommendable knife all the way around. Um, I, uh, I, I urge you to give it a, a try for yourself. Uh, as usual, like I've said many times in this video to the point where it's probably annoying, there is a link right at the top of the description that you can use to pick this knife up for yourself or a loved one this holiday season. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it. I don't know that there's anything else I can say about this wonderful knife. It's just excellent. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more content coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.